The first boxing boxer induction will be carried out now by Scott, our president, who will be assisted by, by Bullet Bradley. And uh, the family here, come over here, don't all cuddle them together. Want people to see you, what's going on, okay? So uh, at this point, I'll uh, let Scott tell you all about the, uh, the death of the family. I know a little bit about them because uh, I had a hotel in America for quite a while and uh, I knew a uh, uh, bit of the history of the Denham family and all the people around Sherbury, uh, Megan, and, you know, Mary Barr and Phil Coy. But anyway, with no, no further ado, I'll hand over to um, Scott. Uh, thank you very much once again, and um, I'm probably you probably not getting here sick of hearing you say thank you very much. But I'm really, really privileged on this occasion to be presenting. I'm coming down, mate. Hey, yeah, you're on. Queensland Boxing Hall of Fame award to the late Jeffrey Mitter Denver. Now I say Denver, and I feel awkward in, in saying Denver. Because many years ago I went out to Tarun to, to uh, train under a, uh, a bloke who uh, was a state chair at the time, Henry Jarvis. And uh, uh, it was back in the early 60s. And, uh, and pr just prior to me going out, I was sort of lived in Dolby, Dolby was my hometown. And uh, just prior to me going out, uh, there was a trainer out there by the name of Phil Morris. Now, Henry Jarvis told me all the stories about these boys from Sherbrooke. They'd been there to Tarun to train prior to me going out there. And there was Jeff Dynava, Eddie Barney, uh, Adrian Blair, uh, Headley Fisher, who was a very, very good boxer, Headley, uh, Jimmy Edwards, and then a uh, fellow by the name of Jimmy Bond came out from Dolby. But it was a brilliant, brilliant era at the years for amateur boxers in those days. There were boxers, every country town was just, if you were born a male baby, you either played rugby league or boxing, and in most cases, you did both. And, um, and I was one of those forces, ones that went, uh, I was ambidextrous, and I went, I went straight down the middle and did a bit of both. And it was a, 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 a great lot of stories that I heard about the skills of Jeff Dynamo. Now I'm going to change it right now to dinner because I asked, I, I asked Rosalie before and, and, uh, and Billy and Jeff which name they prefer and uh, dinner seems to be the accepted one. Now, um, to quote, and I'm going to quote, and I hope Grantley Keys it doesn't mind because I read an article that Bradley wrote in the Sunday Mail today, and I think it epitomises the uh, the movements of sportsmen out at Sherberg, which is a small community just outside of Melbourne. And Grantley writes in the paper today, in an era where their race often held them back, these indigenous stars use sport to help blaze a trail for the future generations. And that was brilliant. I thought it really caught my eye. And I thought, well now, that is a lovely, lovely way to put it. Because um, I was always fascinated, even as a little boy, about the skills of Jerry Jerome, who incidentally worked for my grandfather. So there was a bit of a tie up there somewhere. He was a, a carpenter. Even with my grandfather was a carpenter, and Jerry Jerome, the great Jerry Jerome, who happens to be one of our members of the Hall of Fame, uh, it helped my grandfather build stables on Jimbo Station outside of Dolby. Anyway, that's enough about me. But I am just, I've always been wrapped in the skills and the uh, abilities of Aboriginal boys coming up through the ranks in all sports. The great Eddie Gilbert, of course, which happens to be Eddie Barney's father, I think, wasn't it? The grandmother. Father, I think, Eddie. Eddie Gilbert, the bloke who bowled Don Bradman out for a duck. Yeah. So now, um, Jeff 
unfortunately can't be with us tonight. He passed away back in 2008. So on behalf of uh, the, the Nineveh family, we've got his nephew here, young Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jr. And his uh, sister, I think, Rosemary. Niece for Jeffrey. And of course, Billy, grandson. Grandson Billy. And so we've got, and of course, one of the one of the great boxing trainers and one of the great featherweight champions and also an inductee of the Hall of Fame, the great Bullet Bradley. You want to talk about Bullet, you know, you've seen that ad on TV, haven't you? You know, where the, the bunny keeps on going and going and going and all the other rabbits, they fall over and go to sleep and this one, he's on energetic battery. You know the one. Well, this is him. <laughs> Well, anyway, let me hand it over now to, uh, to Bullet. Bullet Bradley, Arthur Bullet Bradley, and uh, he can uh, relay a lot of stories about Jeff Dinner. Thank you, Bullet. And thank you for that. I'm very privileged to be here. The golf smack, but you can't know what to say. Uh, I listened to Kim Dundee before he said that. Uh, Yes, I think that one went wrong. I had to fight, get myself in a good condition, fight me and fight Mr. Nobody. That's what went wrong. But talking about Jeffrey Miller down at Alistair, Jeff and I were gym mates. Uh, Jeffrey started with boxing and trainer. His name was Jack Anderson. We called him Jack Silver. Jack was a good man. The first of all, the first time Jeffrey and I went away, we went to McCollum. And we both fought Australian champion. Jeffrey Miller fought Wally Taylor, lost the points. I fought his brother Wally Taylor, but lost the points. But listen, remember this, Jeffrey Miller and Denver. He was the ultimate in 1962, representing Australia at the British Empire Games. He won the Empire title. In that, in that, at that particular game, there were four boys when Eddie Barney, flyweight, Miller, Denver, Denver, Adrian Blair, lightweight, and Jimmy Bond, all that kind of That was a real achievement. But the thing about Jeffrey Miller, down the he was summing up, he was so hungry. But I, I skipped once a bit there. In 1957, we went to Melbourne for the Australian titles, and we were roommates. I looked after Jeff, we stayed together, he knocked me down. Uh, he won a flyweight title, and I beat him all right that time. But, we went to many times, another time with the good to Windy. Uh, one boy out there beat him. To me, that's one of the best. You shouldn't like boxes, but I do. Uh, he's probably one of the start his best amateur boxes I ever knew. His name was Billy Fink from Sydney. I'll have to exclude that from the Queen. Anyway, thank you for that. But he never met down and was such a humble man. Incredible. Now, would you please keep the applause going because um, Rosemary, I think it is, or Jeff, has got a little poem. Yeah. Oh, yes, you'd like to make a speech, yeah. Yeah, now, this is a little poem. Who wrote it? Ro Rosemary, was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Dinova, Jr. Hello. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jeffrey Denova, and I stand here on behalf of my uncle, Jeffrey Miller Denova, and the Denova family. And his Chinese and the people of Shirin. Before I continue, I would like to show my respect and acknowledge traditional caretakers on the land we are on today, past, present, and future. Thank you, Bullet Bradley, for um, telling us some stories about Akumira and Bob Webster 
Thank you for nominating him into the Queensland Boxing in all of fame. Just getting a bit emotionally. People, sorry. Uncle Rosa, a very respectful gentleman, inside and outside the ring. He did not talk much about his boxing career to family, but when it came to boxing, he always yarned with other boxers. And he was very happy to share his knowledge and stories to others. I was asked here today to share with you about how this special occasion for Uncle Mira make us feel. Let me tell you that we are filled with mixed emotions. When I got the phone call from Bob Webster, I was so excited that I could not wait to tell people of this great news for our deadly Uncle Hero. We have great sadness in our hearts and minds because Uncle Mira is not here to witness his induction. However, we are very grateful, happy, and full of pride that Uncle Mira has been recognized for his boxing career and his achievement from it. And we know that Uncle Mira would be feeling the same. Before I finish with a thank you, I am going to ask William Dockley to read a poem about Uncle Mira.
not many new pop and bands watching Korea. So it was a special tribute to him when he um, was holding the Queen's Bat in 2006, which was um, organised by the Sherbrooke Council and the Queensland Department of Australia to Australia Island Policy. Pop is, uh, is an inspiration to all of us. Uh, three mentions must go to Sam Morgan and Sister Andrew Leslie Wilson. And thank you to the Queensland Boxing Association for inducting my grandfather, Jeffrey Mandanova, into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Clay Waterman. He uh, he won the world amateur. What division, Clay? Uh, one Australia's first amateur world title. I was 15. I was only about three. <laughs> Were you ever that big? <laughs> Good on you, Clay. Good on you. We, the Deliver family, his boxing group from Shebek and the people of Shebek would like to thank everyone involved for acknowledging and accepting Uncle into the Boxing Hall, Queensland Boxing Hall of Fame. Jeffrey Miller Deliver, you've done us proud and what a scholarly champion. Certificate, Jeff, just to remind you, and uh, you can put it in the Sherbrooke Museum. Yep. And we know it's a great museum of uh, sporting achievements in Sherbrooke. I like the potential of this place. Please put it up in the Jeff Denver section. And uh, and also, this is your badge to wear, and uh, you can wear it if you like it to give it to the relative to wear, and just take turns, you know. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Thank you. 